right, welcome back to the channel. So I just topped the Deck Devastator 7 tournament that happened over the weekend of, what is it, August 25th, 24th and 25th. And I was using Dream Frogs. I wanted to try this deck out in a tournament. This is my first time playing it in a tournament. Uh, so it's nice to top with it immediately, but I already know a lot about frogs and how to play the deck. So switching from Hero Frogs to this build wasn't really that much of a learning curve. The only things I had to factor in is what do you do with Fishborg Blaster and how Death Frog interacts with the substitute combo, which I do like a lot. I know a lot of people have been wondering what my take is on Dream Frog versus Hero Frogs and like which deck do I think is better and all of that stuff. So to be blunt, I do think that Hero Frogs is a overall better deck. I think Dream Frogs has some strengths uh, that are cool, but I think that at the end of the day, Hero Frogs has a better matchup spread across the board. In fact, the way I was eliminated from this tournament in top cut was against GBs and this, this type of deck, like this build of frogs, because it looks so similar to old school frog monarchs, that's just like one play per turn and you don't really have extenders like Miracle Fusion and stuff. You also don't play any monsters that are 1800, 1900, like Alias and Stratos. So your GB matchup is really, really bad. Like this deck has a really, really bad GB matchup. And there's only so much you can do to improve it, to be honest. Uh, whereas Hero Frogs, on the other hand, this is actually my exact deck list from winning India. Annapolis, this is like the standard hero frog deck and it just has a much higher ceiling when it comes to not doing one play per turn so i do prefer hero frogs overall but i did want to try out dream frogs so some of the benefits of playing dream frogs is that you can dupe block multiple times this card is insane pot avarice is i think what makes this deck go round I also like Salvage. So my build is actually inspired more by Bronte's build that won Nationals this year, the NAWCQ Ultimate Time Wizard Tournament in Austin, Texas. I liked his build. Here it is right here. So you notice that he plays two pots, two salvage. Uh, and so my, my build is also very similar and I took that idea as well. But then I'm also trying other things like playing Soul Exchange and Econ. I am not playing Sangan. I'm only playing one Fishborg. He's playing two Fishborgs. He's playing Sangan, Double Drunk Synchron, uh, Jar Greed, which I think that this card should just be enemy Controller. I like that card a lot more. Uh, so there are some differences between the builds. But I think overall, like the gist of it is all still there. Like the essence of what Dream Frogs is, is all still there. It's basically a Frog Monarch deck that has this extra little trick to it. And I like the extra trick too, because when you do Substitute in this deck, it's a lot more threatening. Like this deck is more Frog focused than it is, you know, Miracle Fusion or anything else like that. Like even, even the Monarchs are kind of secondary to the Frogs. When you get Substitute resolved, everything just goes crazy from there. And the reason why... I'm playing Salvage specifically for people wondering is that Salvage is a good card to open with. So if you open up Swap Frog, a Water Monster and Salvage, it allows you to go into a Substitute combo, which is the strongest thing that this deck can do. And so I favored opening with strong hands as opposed to playing three pots, which is better on the later end of the game. Pot is, pot is much better of a card overall, especially in the late game, but I think that Salvage is a better card early in the game. And another thing I like about Salvage is that if you have a Monarch on the field, playing this card, getting back a swap in a Water Monster allows you to instantly reuse that Monarch. And that's just something that it comes up a lot uh, in my testing and stuff like that. And yeah, this card's just broken. Honestly, sometimes your opponent looks at your graveyard and they see Unifrog in there and they're like, oh, okay, so now I can set, you know, my bottomless or whatever and it won't get popped. Or they're pulling the rug and then you just go salvage and get back Unifrog and they're like, oh shit, I didn't know that was going to happen. You could also re block them. And that's something that both of these cards accomplish. So Pot of Avarice and Salvage allow you to re block your opponent. And that is like the biggest strength of this deck to me. You do block your opponent once in the other frog decks, like Hero Frogs and stuff. And when they break it, that mini game is over, right? They don't have to worry about it for the rest of the game. It's now just your Monarchs and Miracle Fusions and stuff they have to worry about. But in this deck, you do block someone and they break it and you do block them again and they break it and you do block them again. And I'm going to actually show you that. And I have I have eight replays to show you from all my Swiss rounds. I went X and two, so I was six and two in Swiss. And you're going to see me do block someone several times in one game. It is actually quite ridiculous. And after the third time, I would argue that after the second time it was over, but after the third time, it was like, you will never touch me again. Like you will never ever declare an attack again. You'll never be able to do anything again. It's just too much. So I like a lot of things about this deck. I do think this is a good deck. I think that this is right there in that upper echelon of decks uh, with the big three, because I, you know, I kind of consider it just being frogs, value Blackwing on a big three. So now you can say, instead of just saying hero frogs, I think that you also can include dream frogs in that. But I think that if this particular deck became more popular, I think that more people could play decks like GBs and it really hurts this deck's viability at that point, because it, it really has a bad GB matchup. It just feels like old school monarchs where your, your opening turn is like summon swap frog, send treeborn to the grave, bounce, pass, and pray. And like, 
if they just attack you and they have red yari then you know you know what happens they just it's just gg so but i think that like the blackwing matchup it's not the best like james arc also thinks that the blackwing matchup is really bad and i agree with that i think and this is another thing that i like about hero frogs miracle fusion is really hard for black wings to deal with they can't trade favorably with an absolute zero like no matter what they do if they deprison they they mirror force they collute they're going to lose multiple cards to an absolute zero that interaction is really really strong to me so this deck i would say has a worse black wing matchup as well but it does have a good frog matchup because in a mirror match you just have way more of a late game than the other frog decks do like the late game of this deck is so much stronger with the multiple pot of avarices and the salvages allowing you to reuse your caiuses that's that's nuts um allowing you to again dupe lock them multiple times and then also you could just colossal armory arm them if they put something in attack mode at any point so there's a lot to say in terms of my side deck uh the side deck is just a mixture of a bunch of different things happening so we have two lads i'd like this card a lot because after game one i kind of transformed the deck into a frog monarch deck where a lot of the tricks of the deck go away and then we put in cards like lad and vanity's fee and stuff like that to just simplify the game plan make it more linear against decks that i don't have to worry about you know like like, like if it's not glabbies i feel like going into frog monarchs is actually good because i think frog monarchs has a good matchup against like pretty much the whole format like lad vanity's fiend and rises and, and caius's over and over and over again it just kind of beats every deck unless they have some kind of removal so that's the idea behind that the dark dust spirit is for amaryllis and the mirror match uh kaiku is for vayu dragon turbo uh mirror matches any decks like that that rely on graveyard if you play anything weird that just relies on the graveyard the crow same thing the two soul exchanges allow me to have three soul exchanges after game one this is an integral card for this deck because again after game one i turn into a frog monarch deck like a classic frog monarch deck and needing three soul exchanges is, is a big deal this makes it where if they banish your treatment frog you still have plays it comes up all the time so i like this a lot uh normative extermination i was testing this out just one copy for when i go second just having a way to burst out like turn one i can hit their one back row and then hopefully do a play uh so that was the idea behind that and then we have two dust tornadoes as a way to deal with whirlwind because you do need outs to that card specifically and also outs to mask restrict this does not out mask restrict this does not out royal oppression this does not out black whirlwind this card is not that good uh i will literally argue anyone down this card has a very niche use and honestly this card underperformed throughout this tournament if i'm being completely honest like it did not do that great but at the same time i don't mind one of it but i almost want to say that like even giant trinidad i feel like would have been better honestly just because yeah this card wasn't very good I honestly maybe twister might be might be better at this point because we're getting to the point where i'm seeing more mask restricts and stuff like that and against black wings like i would just rather have twister for to deal with oppression turn one uh mask restrict they play that black world one of course so yeah the prison is amazing i love this card now in the side deck for frog decks it's just really good it doesn't really need much more of an explanation and then the one spiritual water art for when i go first i love this card when i go first it's just a way to maybe win the game because if a good player sees your hand they're probably going to win unless you sack them so there's that uh and keep what i just said in mind uh but yeah this is the deck this is the build it is well rounded i would say but i also want to mention this so when comparing dream frogs to hero frogs one of the things i love about hero frogs specifically is that you have the three stratos in your deck which means that your opening hands are more consistent overall so in this build the best openings are like substitute swap frog and then if i open like very specific combos where it's like swap frog a water monster and substitute or swap frog a water monster that's 1500 or lower and salvage those are all good openings but they don't come up that often and the unfortunate part is like when this deck doesn't see treeborn it's really fucking bad like it is a really 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 lackluster deck when it doesn't get the treeborn just like old frog monarch decks it's it's just not good if it doesn't get the treeborn access and of course yes it has a lot of ways to get the treeborn but like game you know Yu Gi Oh is a game where everything doesn't just play out by the math it doesn't play out by probability so even though you have a high chance of opening treeborn you're going to see in these replays that just doesn't happen and some of my hands were really fucking bad in this tournament where i felt like if i was playing against either a better opponent or someone with a better deck I just would not have won some of these rounds and that's a little unfortunate um i just feel like the deck lacks consistency is like the issue i have with it whereas again hero frog just has those three copies of stratos uh, really go far like just having the e-call the rota and the stratos on top of the substitutes the swap frogs the raw treeborn frog and all of that future fusion one for one like this deck just has more starters and personally in a tournament i just value that a little bit more so that's like kind of my bias there but yeah, why don't we get into the replays now?
Okay, so round one, I'm up against Gappies, I think is how you say it. And I'm just gonna show my hand so you guys don't see what they are playing yet. So my hand right here is not very good, especially going second. Um, yeah, this hand is very lackluster and I could very easily lose the game if this is just Raikou, which it happens to be Raikou. Now, I don't know this going into it, but I kind of assume that it is because Raikou is the most common set monster in the format. So like, I am not setting this Duprog into that face down monster, right? Like I'm just going to dust shoot as soon as they get a chance to do anything. Yeah, so the, I'll, I'll show both now because I just put back, I, I forget what it was, Trap, Mirror, Ryza, Dupe Heavy. Okay, so we both see each other's hands. But basically, I send back a card. And I'm still reading that this is Raikou, obviously. This deck that they're playing, I'm not really sure what it is, but look at how bad my hand is. If this was a real deck, no, like no offense, but if this was a deck like Black Wings, Vayu, Hero Frogs, anything like that, I'm not winning this game. If we're being frank, I'm just not going to win this game. This is this hand is very mediocre and I've had several draws now and it's not getting better. It's still not getting better. This is what I mean. Like this deck just, it's kind of a bricky mess. And like all of these cards that I have in my hand, these are all played in every Dream Frog list. Like it's not even like you're seeing any of my tech choices or anything. These are just cards that the deck plays. Like this is just a bricky hand. You're gonna see a lot of this throughout this tournament report basically. It's a little unfortunate. So they attack me with a random Sirocco. I'm going to just take that because there's literally no reason to battle fader when I'm reading that this is also a Raikou. So I'm reading the situation correctly, but yeah, so they're gonna Raikou here and then they're going to do the most. And I'm going to Battle Fader this as they use their normal summon so they can't Kai's me in main phase too. So this Battle Fader is going to come down heavy. Can't risk the back row being anything good. I'm down bad. And then we're just going to do Ryza on the Card Trooper, attack over the Debris Dragon, leaving him with these two awkward monsters on the field. Uh, set Mirror Force and go. So yeah, here we're in a really good spot now. Summon Swap, activate effect to send. He Torrential, so he loses like so many cards here. And I'm just fine with this because I think that my pot of Avarice is close to being live. Yeah, it is. Main deck Kaiku is also wild, but luckily we do have Mirror Force here. So at this point, like I've stabilized, like I'm in a really good spot and they're going for this Drill Warrior, which is actually pretty strong for them. But I'm like, all right, well, all we can do is just start attacking and hopefully Pot gets live at some point. So he gets back Gale with Drill Warrior. I'm not sure if that was the correct thing to do. Um, I guess if they got back the Breed Dragon to mate, like Black Rose or whatever, they would have to crash with my Kai. So that's not good either. So maybe, yeah, maybe maybe Gale was the best thing here. Uh, but it did draw a Deep Prison. So yeah, bring back, attack over this guy. And now we have Compulse for the Drill Warrior. So we're in a really good spot now. And I, I do like this card as a tech choice. Uh, it's it's actually pretty decent. I saw James Arc playing this, and I think that it's good. Once I tested it, I was like, oh yeah, I, I can see why this is a good card. It's basically Swap Frog at home. So they're going to go into an Ancient Fairy Dragon. Now, my pot is already live. So once they kill this, I'll be able to pot without putting back Tree Worm, which is the goal. This deck basically needs six monsters in a graveyard to pot correctly, right? Because you don't want to pot your Tree Worm back. So put back all five. I will say, I think that this is the best pot of Everest deck in the format. So yeah, we're about to uh, do a bit of a dupe block situation here. After we pot, so I mill all the frogs out and then I'm gonna keep going with the combo. Yeah, this is perfectly fine. So yeah, my opponent is in a really bad spot, to say the least. I'm just kind of freestyling at this point. Uh, I feel like I'm in one of those positions where, like, I can't lose. He, he literally has no cards, like, literally no cards. So I'm just big chilling over here. And so, yeah, that's, that's the end of that game. All right, game two. So I just go for it because I don't think a deck like his is playing oppression, which is one of the benefits of playing against decks like this. You could just go all in. So we're going to do a turn one pot It's very strong. So it kind of mitigates the minus one that I took from using one for one. 
attack is set it's dandelion so i have an idea that he's going to be doing the quick draw thing and i'm going to full dupe block here just because he has so many cards i don't want to risk him breaking my substitute where i'll be getting some value so yeah he's going to break my first dupe block this turn with black rose dragon and they miss timing because dandelion is chain link one and black rose is chain link two so the dupe frog get destroyed as chain link two which means they cannot activate so that's missing the timing our hand is really strong so i am just going to lad him because he's down in cards and it'll also negate this guy so he goes book of moon so chain link one book of moon chain link two lad chain link three with skill drain i don't think either one of us realized that this should have went face down it's not going to matter but it should have gone face down uh, but because he has this skill drain on the field like it yeah it ends up not mattering because it's not like he could get back something to uh kill this face down so this is where we are now speed over it and this is this game gets really bad i'm going to end up with like plus eight by the end of this game just because of dream frog's sheer amount of card advantage after playing pots and salvage and all that stuff yeah i'll let him beat over this it doesn't really do anything i also kind of like my lad being under skill drain it stays at 2800 so he goes chain link one deep prison chain link two lad and i'm gonna go chain link three or geeky break target skill drain which would then if it resolved backwards this would pop this and then this would negate the deep prison so that's what i was going for uh but then he has a second skill drain so i'm like okay so you end up using a lot of your cards here and kaiku still negated so nothing happens uh yeah so i'm just going to pop put everything back and even right now i could just set uh, substitute and i'll be fine and that's exactly what i do so he can't get over this he does rip his own pot which is pretty nice i'm not mad at this because again i feel threat i don't feel threatened at all here like i'm gonna be honest there's not really anything i think my opponent could draw to get out of the situation uh yep so we're gonna mst this bring back tree barn summon junk make this guy really big i could push harder but like it won't kill him or anything so i'm just kind of like whatever and then main phase two we're going to dupe block again he is going to black rose again so this is the second time he's broken my dupe block this game but we are not done So here we're going to literally do it again. <laughs> this, this is the third dupe block, by the way. Uh, so yeah, and then attack and main phase two, bounce the swap frog up to my hand and summon dupe frog back out. So yeah, this is the third time he's been dupe blocked. And you can see the resilience of this deck. It can just keep on going. It's the energizer bunny. The later the game goes, the better this deck is, I think. But it can struggle in the early game to get out of the early game. But yeah once you get going it's like it's not really fair like i don't like this doesn't do anything if you look at the card advantage right now like i have six cards on the field and six cards in hand so i have 12 cards to his five so i'm up seven cards right now i play soul exchange and he actually allows it so i reestablish light and darkest dragon yep i get the fossil dino i get the mirror force so he's just losing cards so he's at four cards Yeah, and then we just get rid of the lad so that, that way it doesn't blow up my whole field. And these will miss timing if lad, you know, got destroyed. So, yeah, pretty easy round one, I would say. This is a really good matchup. This is a deck that's not in the top three. It's not one of the big three at all. Uh, and yeah, it's, I don't even, I'm not really sure what this is. Like, it's just like a, a homebrew, I guess. But let's move on to round two. So. So we're up against GBs. My hand is not very good, for being honest. Yeah, this is this is not not the best. Well, here we go. So yeah, he goes for this, and I regeki break. So that's one of the good things about the discard traps. They allow you to stop test tiger plays, which I really really like. I'm still in such a bad spot though. Like I just have a dupe frog set. 
Uh, but I think he, I think he messes up here. So he goes into Darius and to be honest, he should not pop this. He should just attack it. It's a frog deck. Like it can't be Raikou or anything weird like that, but you play in the battle fader by popping it and you give me a search. So this is just incorrect. Unless you have chariot, of course. Um, so the battle fader screws him over really big here. I rip Ryza about time. And yeah, this is going to put him in a really bad spot. So we're going to Avarice. And now the game comes down to like, can he draw a GB before I can essentially win the game? And because that back row was there last turn, I know that it's not going to do anything this turn. So yeah, Ryza is just cooking him. Yeah, this deck plays a lot of support cards, and if they don't if they don't see a GB in certain situations, they just lose. And that's kind of what's happening now. Like he's just he's just literally losing to uh a monarch train. So yeah, I think that he threw that game a bit by using Jizaris' effect on the Duke Frog. I don't think there was a reason to do that. I think you just attack it and don't give your opponent a chance to battle fader you. This game is not okay. I go second, MST, one for one. This is where I love Death Frog. The fact that in the middle of a substitute combo, you can just like beat over a monster, like Greffer or Prisma in this case, is amazing. And then full dupe block him, so no shenanigans. Yep, get back Death Frog. He's going to attack. I let it go. He takes some damage. Ready Ari, which isn't even that big of a deal because I'm pretty sure I have two Treeborn Frogs in the grave, so like that is fine test tiger we're gonna say no attack again seven kicky break again he's gonna try to do this again and i'm gonna kicky break again and the death frog is just going to solo him literally a 1900 monster is too much for this deck with a back row of course but you get the idea and then main phase two summon kaius and that's game so that was a quick 2-0 but yeah that that was a that was a good showing for this deck against GBs, but it doesn't always go like that. Okay, round three. So we're playing against our teammate, Ryan Rykoko. He actually won an event with, well, he's won four events. He's been on a channel, uh, but he's won with like Christius Sworn, I think, and Dragon Turbo and Black Wings and Vayu, something like that. It's, it's four decks. I think that they're all different or something, but he's playing Dragon Turbo. Uh, this is also a matchup that is very scary, but I get to go first and my hand is nuts. So anytime you have one for one, a monster that Junk Synchron can revive and Junk Synchron in your hand, that three card combo is crazy. Then you add cards like Salvage and it, it's even crazier, like the things that you can do. So I recognize that he's playing Dragon Turbo. I decide to go a little harder here because I don't want to randomly die. I don't have any defense. So I'm just kind of like putting all my defense into this. Luckily I said MST turn one because he had Future Fusion, but he also had Stone, so he got it back. And he's gonna go crazy. This game is so interesting the way it goes. I actually love this game because we both opened up fucking crazy. Like I opened up insane, but he also opens up insane. Look, look, he replenishes his entire hand. So we draw the Gores and we're just pushing our advantage here. So I'm gonna get in. And then we're going to triple dupe frog so this makes it really hard for him to come through because i know game one i usually don't have cards like uh, lightning vortex so he would have to go brio and pitch so many cards to deal with this and that's exactly where this is going he's going to brionic and pitch it all like pitch four he's just going for game because i'm at 8,000. this is game if he brings back blue eyes so he had an opportunity to bring back this thing but i wouldn't die all right, so he said, I'm going to put you on. You don't have Fader. You don't have Gores. Unfortunately for him, I actually do have Gores. And I just win. Yeah, and it's going to be really easy to kind of clean this up. Think heavy. He draws two. Junk Synchron, which he knows I have. I make my own Brio. Balance everything. And even if... Even if he somehow had Gores here... Uh, I would just bounce the Swap Frog to my hand and then use Brio's effect, discarding the Swap Frog, bounce the Gores back to his hand inside, dust shoot, dust shoot him on his draw if he had four cards. I think he had four cards after I Brio'd his whole field and 
all that stuff and he wrecked list so yeah this game he opens up nuts again uh card destruction then he's gonna get back rejuve or try to but he already played it once pretty sure so like i just get rejuved for a million and our hand is not very good and he also masker restricts me so it's like what can you do i'm gonna hail mary here for a pot of avarice play uh but yeah it is not this is gonna be a quick game he just auto wins this deck is so unfair when it gets to play like the uh dragon turbo deck but as you're gonna see from game three i'm pretty sure i mean he gets to play game three but i think he has a slow start or something and then like i, I don't think he expected me to keep in heavy storm or or whatnot but i'm i'm very aware of the side strategies of dragon turbo i know that they stop mask restricts and all that stuff and just like real traps just like frogs used to do so you're just keeping your heavy storm against this deck it's actually good if you're playing frogs like just don't side it out uh, but yeah, this game is going to be really interesting. So we go first and our hand is slow. If we had a water monster, this hand would be nuts, but we don't. So cards of consonants and then he just passes, which I'm like, okay, that was great. Like that was absolutely amazing. So can I for a thousand here? So next time we can salvage and do like stuff, right? Uh, so we're going to salvage. What do we have? We have torrential set. So special this out, send the guy, summon, and then I'm gonna go wide, you know, my deck, and then Avarice. So I kept in all the power cards in this in this matchup. I kept in all the salvages, all the pot of Avarice and stuff like that because he's trying to sack me, right, with the Dragon Turbo deck, and I'm just trying to sack him with my deck. So that's kind of how I looked at it when I was side decking. Like I need all of the broken plus ones and ignorant cards that I can handle. And then side out all of the fair cards, basically. So he sets a ton. I already have Heavy Storm. Um, but yeah. So he's going to Mask Restrict on my draw phase. I Heavy. He loses everything. And then it's just Tribute for Kai's. And I don't imagine I could lose this game now in this position where he's under a dupe lock. And I'm just beating him down with Monarchs. And I just summon the Ryza before I even draw for turn just to let him know, like, I already had it. Uh, but yeah, that was Dragon Turbo. So really crazy games there, but um, this deck can do some really cool stuff. So round four, this is my first loss. And things go terribly wrong. So I'm going to show both because I have Dust Shoot in every game. Well, you'll see. I want to show both, though, because th things go terribly wrong here. Like, terribly wrong. So I open up really strong, summon swap, you know, send, uh, or summon substo tribute, summon swap, send treeborn, set dust shoot, pass to him. Uh, he has one monster, I put it back, and then so he's gonna charge, obviously, but I already have the answer for that with my Ryza. Attack him. So right now, if you're looking at this, and even when I was playing this, I was like, all right, well, this game, this game one is pretty much chalked, right? Like, I can't really imagine losing this game. But just you wait, because Vayu is a casino deck in disguise. Vayu, Bottomless, and Sirocco. So, uh, his mills were nuts. And that's not all, though watch what he draws because this is where it gets really like crazy and my hand is still so good that i'm not too worried even though he did mill really good but like i'm like okay this is fine so yeah he rips a kaius he kaises my tree born now there are some considerations here i get you break my own tree born frog here but i Honestly, felt like with the Junk Synchron in my hand and the Econ and Soul Exchange and all that, like I have so many ways to deal with this and I can even reestablish the um, the Treatment Frog if I like Junk Synchron, get back swap, and then like bounce swap to my hand and stuff like that, uh, depending on how the game plays out. So I'm not too worried right now. Then we draw a swap, so we're like, okay, so we can, we have plays that we can do here. Soul Exchange, Ryza. So I hit the Torrential. Not I didn't know that it was Torrential. Obviously, I know he has D Prison in his hand, or it's or it's this. 
Um, but I didn't know which one he set. And so this is kind of one of those things where Uh, even though I dusted him, the knowledge is good, but then he's he's not setting the way I thought he would. And he's drawing like a madman, as you can see. So not only have the mills been absurd with the Vayu and the Sirocco, and now the Kai is off the top to get rid of Treeborn, and the Greffer, then the Necro combo. So it's just like, yeah. And this is Rageki break. So we, we live, but we live barely. So, okay. I'm like, I have decisions again where I could make black rose. Cause I know that he has a deep prison set now, right? I've trapped that shooting ice. I, I see every other card. So this is guaranteed deep prison. He also has a gardener, which is annoying. So like attacking is completely out of the question. I basically feel like I have two plays here. One of them is make an Android and just kind of sit on it and start gaining life. But then I lose the brain control off the top. And I think there's other cards that I lose too as well. Uh, like if he draws another Caius. So I'm like, because I can't attack, right? If I attack, he deprisons. So I was like, I can make an Android or I could go Black Rose. I could do either one of those plays. So I decide to do the Black Rose play. So I trade my two cards for all of his cards. So now he's top decking and I have Avarice. So I'm going to be at three cards to his one. But this pot is awful. Like, I don't know if there's two worse cards I could have drawn off of that pot, if I'm being honest. Like, really, really bad. And then, yeah. So this 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 is just like an unfortunate series of events here. Yeah. And then he draws the fire to kill me, but he could have drawn so many things to kill me right there after the game got to that point. But yeah, Pot of Avers let me down. Uh... His mills were insane, the draw was insane, and I think the only thing I could have done differently there was Regeki break my own Treatment Frog, but in that situation, I don't think I need to do that. Like, that's such a uh, aggressive thing to do, to just save a Treatment Frog when your hand is as cracked as mine was, so it's like... Yeah, it's really unfortunate. I bricked this game, as you can see, my hand is awful, and his hand happens to be really good. Like, I trapped Dushy him, and I got to see that his hand is really good. Uh, he had all of the starter monsters like Greffer, Raikou, and Armageddon Knight. So when I trap Dusty to them, it's not even like I made his hand bad because his hand has so many good starters. You don't have the Torrential here. <laughs> he mills double value. And this game is over. Like, I, I cannot win this game. Uh, I would need to draw Soul Exchange, I think, to have a shot. And even then, it's still bad because he can make a 2500 guy. Yeah, this, this game is cooked. So he knows all my cards too, and we're just in a bad spot. Then he draws Burial, which is like, oh, that's so unnecessary. That is so unnecessary. But yeah, he ends up going undefeated in Swiss too. So it I told him, I was like, it's your day. He's playing well too on top of that. But yeah, clearly, clearly not my round to win. And then we play against 10 foot here. Uh, so who was that roll? I think, did he want to die roll? Yeah, he wanted to die roll Allure into Whirlwind. And this is going to be something that you see a lot throughout these Blackwing matches is that I had to go through so many Whirlwinds, like an obnoxious amount. Or well, this game is... It's a little unfortunate because I start to claw back into it when I don't feel like I should have. Like, I think that he was dirtling a little bit. Um, but we start to crawl back here and I'm pretty sure the game comes down to brain control. And you know how I feel about that card. That card is outrageously toxic. And my deck was giving me no help at all. Like, look at this hand. This is what I mean. This deck breaks a lot. Yeah, he's going to do this. So I'm going to threaten a Black Rose and he does it on the Summon of Junk Synchron. So basically what he was saying is like Chain Link 1 was Junk Synchron, Chain Link 2 Torrential. So then it resolves backwards, Torrential destroys the field and then Junk Synchron brings out the swap and then I just bounce it to my hand. Play Salvage. Special out my guy, send Treeborn. So I have access to Treeborn now. My life is very low though, I'm at 24. 
and he doesn't have any aggression, which is nice for me. Yep. He goes heavy and brain control. So, yeah. A little unfortunate. I felt like I was clawing back into that game after him opening a whirlwind and going first, but we weren't able to get there. Uh, this game, yeah, we're just gonna go mill all the way down, and he has he has whirlwind again, and this time Sirocco to make dark end to break dupe lock turn one, and yep, and also I a lot of Vacro. so uh, Uni Frog he de prisons of course I set two. He used the effect, I think, about mirror forcing here, but I'm like, no, I want to see if I can get a little bit more out of it. So he mirror force. I'm like, okay, I've had enough. He solemns when I try to dust radio. Dust shoots, puts back glad, don't really care. Ryza, pulling the rug, special, get in, get in a thousand. And I have Gores in hand, which, yeah, he doesn't know I have Gores in hand, right? Yeah, he doesn't know I have Gores in hand. So I, I can check the Whirlwind and this is going off. I'm going to de-prison this guy so he doesn't get any damage. Yep, and at this point, Whirlwind has resolved too many times for me to realistically win. I would need to get really lucky with like brain control. And that's actually where this is going. Like I do end up drawing a brain control, but he has deck Devi and all of my cards are under. So here there's a decision that I could make. He's at 3000, he's really low. I could tribute the Gores in this tree burn when I get the main phase for Lad. But realistically, he's going to play literally any back row, right? Like if he uses any back row, Lad goes to 2300. And it will crash with the arm wing, which is what I would be trying to attack. I mean, I could also try to attack the blizzard. But like, I want to kill the monster that's that's bigger, obviously. Um, so we're in a really interesting spot where I could also just go for game. Like if his back row isn't specifically. If it isn't specifically uh, deck devastation virus, I do have a shot, but yeah, so I think I think for a while here, then I decide, you know what, we're going to go for it. And he has Deck Devi, which takes care of all of these cards. So I just lose. So Deck Devi's broken. And yeah, getting Whirlwind every game is a little unfortunate. Okay, on to, was this round six, I think? So yeah, I think this is round six. Another not so good hand. And you start to see that I wasn't capping. These, these hands are just... Uh, and again, these are all cards that the deck just plays. Like all builds play all of these cards. Like this it's just uh it's a little it's a little annoying. Like maybe I was just drawing bad, but like, god damn it. <laughs> like Alright, so we draw substitute after like two turns of nothing. Go into a full dupe block. He heavies. And here, I'm not really sure like what's happening, but he just starts using all of his cards, and that is a quick ticket to losing against frogs. Like, look at how many cards I have, and look how many cards he has. Like it, like it's bad. Yeah, no. He seven tools me. So we're still in a fantastic spot. He's at 4,300. I could kill him in multiple ways. I could also make I could make a uh, army armor here. Pump. This will go to 37. Then equip army arm. This will go to 47. And attack over this guy. He would take 47. He's at 43. So he would die. And even if he had two Kalutes, 28 plus 17 is still not 47. It's lower than that. So yeah, no matter what he has in his hand, uh, army arm will kill. But I just go for Brio because it's also exact game. And I kind of didn't want him to have army arm in his mind. Like, I wanted to play that game without him thinking that, like, I wouldn't even play the rest of the set without thinking about Armory Arm, because Brio, everyone sees the Brio play. Like, Brio is the most basic fucking play. So I was like, you know what? I'm actually going to not do the Armory Arm play and just do the basic Brio play to win. Like, that was an actual decision that I, that I made during the game, but... Okay, so, yeah, this game is, like, meh. 
uh, another whirlwind game, right? Like he draws whirlwind every game, I think, or at least these first two games he drew whirlwind. So, so far every game I'm just trying, but yeah. All right. We're out of the gas. We don't have treeborn access again. Our hand is bad again. Yep. Yeah, this torrential, and I think I get dark armed here, like blizzard, dark arm. So yeah, we never had a shot. We are dead. I don't want to show my back rows because he's going to pop them, obviously. Okay. <laughs> like, oh, these hands. All right. So just a little draw pass. Yep. He attacks for 17. One for one, soul exchange. Now, now he can't not commit to the field because he's trying to be cheeky and not commit, which I understand. But like, okay, if you don't commit now, now it's bad. So we're just biding our time. He's doing an obvious Icarus attack play. All right, so I might as well show the hand here since you know, it's, uh, I dust shooted him. So this is what he has. And he's playing around heavy. Like, he doesn't want to get heavy stormed. But he could just set Solemn. So I'm not, I'm not really sure what's going on here. Like, he allows me to tribute for Caius, which I don't think that I should have ever been able to do this. This is weird. I'm not, I'm not really sure what the logic is behind holding Floodgates in your hand with Solemn to protect them. Like, that just seems strange to me. I would have had so many dead cards, but like I get to Caius him and like, sure, he uses his Icarus attack, but he could have waited to use the Icarus attack. So I'm not, I, again, I'm not really sure about that one. Uh, so I start getting a little like, just annoyed with the state of the game because I have so many outs to mask restrict in my deck with all the Regeki breaks and stuff, MST, Heavy Storm, like so many outs, right? And I am just not drawing them. So I decide that we're going to make a dupe lock from scratch. So I just summon substitute and I start attacking him. Cause I'm not sure how much time is left in a round, but I want to say there was like 15 minutes left. So just in case this was going to time, I decided that I was going to start getting a damage where I could. So yeah, it's, it's funny, right? But like I am attacking with these guys because I'm trying to do damage and he's helping me. Now we're tied. You see that? I made a game plan and I stuck to it and it worked out. So now if we go into time, at the very least, like we are tied in life. He's gonna make a very aggressive push. So now I'm I'm in the way. I'm in the lead at this point, right? So frogs can't die in battle. <coughs> so here the substitute would die, but nothing else. The prison is he solves this. So I'm super happy with this. Like I'm I'm super okay with this. Like he makes an android, starts gaining life. So yeah, we're going to pot again because we're still looking for like Eki Breaks, MST, Heavy Storm, like so many cards that just get us out of the situation. We finally draw some outs. So I'm like, okay, set Mirror Force, set Regeki Break. Mirror Force, so this thing stops gaining life. Regeki Break, pop this shit. He trapped Dust Shoots. I have way too much gas. The Dust Shoot doesn't do anything. Kai is one of his back row. And the game just falling apart. He has three cards to my several. And yeah, there's really no shot. Yep. He makes this guy, he attacks. I decided to let it go because I just have so much though. I have soul exchange plus the substitute. And yeah, we heavy, he has double oppression, soul exchange substitute, he'll never attack again. I'll dupe lock again. All my dupes are in the, in the deck. So yeah, that game is a little annoying. Um, but I think, I don't know, my opponent not setting the floodgates with the solemn early on and like letting me place some of my cards in my hand. I'm not, I, I, I don't really know what the thought process was. There might be a good reason for it. I, I just don't know as I'm doing this replay analysis because I'm analyzing eight rounds all at once. So like, forgive me if I'm missing something, uh, but let's move on. Okay, this is round seven. And I think that are we up against Black Wings again. So, <laughs> I can't stress enough how hard this tournament was for me because of how bad my hands were. Again, I could have just been having bad luck, but I genuinely think that without the three heroes in the deck, the three Stratos, I mean, like the opening hands are just so sus in this deck. Like they're so sus. So yeah, 
And I'm playing all of the cards in the deck that like you would play in pretty much any build. And yeah, it's just, yeah, and my opponent's opening the best hand that they could possibly get, which is Rowan Shura. So we're just going to go for this. So they torrential here. I'm not sure about this, but all of a sudden now I'm I'm in the lead in card advantage. So, okay. Uh, attack for 17. I draw a swap frog, which is really good here. So yeah, we're gonna kill the monster and we're gonna heavy the back row. Oh God, is this that game where, okay. So <laughs> th during this round, I'm pretty sure this is the round where my friend came over because uh, yeah, I had to answer the door for my friend Jay and I got really distracted and I thought that I was gonna do some kind of salvage substitute play completely botched it while he was talking to me about random shit and that's one of the things that that's a dueling book thing that like because i'm never fully locked in on dueling book because of all the miscellaneous things that are just going on whereas in person like you can only focus on the game in front of you uh and the opponent in front of you but on dueling book it's just like the wild wild west so okay but anyway we are stabilizing a bit and i thought that i had him in kind of like a lock here Cause I'm like, oh, I'm rising him and it's going through and like my attacks are going through. So I'm just going to bounce the rise and try again next turn and everything's great. We pot, I was looking for a trap. This pot fucking failed me. Yeah, this pot was awful. But if we don't die, we're in a good spot. And I'm like, oh, this still isn't game. And then he does this. And I'm randomly dead. So yeah, that was unfortunate. I feel like I kind of threw that game with that misplay, just again, being very distracted. Cause I think at this point it's like seven o'clock and I did tell my friend to come over at seven. I thought I would be done with the tournament by then, silly me. But here we go with another whirlwind situation. So I could see the hand because I dust shooted him. So he oppresses. I wanted him to oppress here. Like I know he has it. So I made the conscious decision to special swap frog here because I was like, I don't want to get Goyo Guardian here. Like I, I don't, I don't want him to special summon anything. I don't want him to do anything extra. Like I, I kind of want him to play a very mild game of Yu-Gi-Oh. So if he flips up oppression, he can't do too much. Like there's no Soroko plus uh, Bora plays or anything like that. Like he can't special summon Gale, but just you wait, just you wait. He gets a search here. And he goes, special summon Gale. And I'm like, oppression. I will pay eight. So I pay eight. And he's like, oh no. And yeah. So that was very fortunate. Uh, our opponent kind of threw there. So we're playing football at this point, right? Like game one and game two, I feel like both of us are playing sus. He opens up Whirlwind Shura again. Very nice. And my hand is actually not bad. Tax for 18, I'm like, sure. So I decide to pop this back row and I'm going to deal with the whirlwind now. Swap, bounce, extra normal summon, uni frog, attack directly, pop the whirlwind. So you have to cut that card off as soon as possible. So I can at least have a shot. I know he has Kalut, he bursts through my dupe frog. Gives me a search. Uh, and then he does a very like obvious deck devastation virus play, but at this point, my deck is already thinned out, so I don't really have anything left to draw from deck Devi that will get hit. I don't think there's a single card in my deck that'll get hit from deck Devi, so I decide to not play this because I think that this is deck Devi back there, and I was right. So we just start getting in. He's gonna go go yo. I already have an out basically by just going like if he sets a back row extermination, Caius this guy. So I'm I'm fine with this for now. Like things are still fine. I draw Gores, which is amazing. Again, I don't have anything to draw that would be deck David. So I missed the 50-50 here. I summon Caius and I'm like, well, if he has pulling the rug, I guess I'm just screwed. But it's a D prison, which is like not the worst, because again, I have Gores and he can't really attack. So I draw Ryza, and this is super awkward. 
because I could return this to the top of my deck and then I'm drawing a Kai's next turn, which is kind of broken. And I still have the Gores in my hand. So I was like, okay, I think I'm in a really good spot here. So yeah, we put this back. And the only thing is like, so here's what I was afraid of. I didn't know if his set monster was a value or not. I had a high assumption that it was, but my thought process was I'm fine with it being value because I have Caius on the top and I have Gores in my hand. So if this is value, he's going to make the 2800 guy, right? He's gonna make the 2800 Blackwing attack over my Ryza, and then I'm just going to Caius it next turn. And that's how the game's going to go. And if he does anything extra, then I have Gores, right? So that's, that was my thought process. Um, but my opponent like does this really weird play where he doesn't use the value and grave for some reason like he just doesn't activate this like he could still summon Sirocco if he wants to summon the 2000 guy and then pump you will go pump make the guy 4800 and attack over this for 2400 which would drop me to 25 which is pretty low so it's harder to drop gores at that point but yeah, this this play is really sus. I'm not really sure what to make of it. Uh, but we draw the Kaius that everyone knows I have, and I am just going to Kaius him. Yep, so here he is at 1800. So this is a really tight game still. But this is where he could have just won. Like I 100% I, I lose this game if he just does the right play. So for whatever reason, he forgets about value again, and he decides to set this Dinah. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I don't know that that's Dinah, but I'm just attacking, because like, what else can I do? And then he realizes, and he says, I forgot about value, which is crazy, right? Like, if he just went summon this, summon the Dinah, and attack, attack, I'm cooked. Like, I draw a Dust Tornado, I'm cooked. Like, I'm literally cooked, I just lose. Uh, and this is round seven. So like we're both X2, which, yeah, I mean, yeah, this, this was, this is just wild. And he just loses because he's just showing that he has dark armed, but he has way too many darks and bottomless. So he, he, he kind of threw here horrendously, which it, you know, it happens. Everyone makes mistakes or whatnot. I'm always giving my opponents grace, but uh, yeah, I can only play who's in front of me. <laughs> so yeah, that's round seven. So we survived by the skin of our teeth, and now we have to play the last round of Swiss against another Blackwing player. So I actually know this guy, his name's Harrison. He got knife at Nationals, unfortunately. And he is a pretty decent Blackwing player too. We played each other at YCS Pasadena in 2022 when they first started doing Edison eight-man pots for light Dr. Dragon Mats. I'm pretty sure it was at Pasadena, but we met, we played each other like, three times that weekend and i had won all of them so he was calling me like his bracket demon and he was like tom that's why he's saying time to face my demons and all that stuff because uh he's never beat me i don't think i think every time we played i ended up we, we were playing blackwing mirror matches and i think that those are already volatile as hell but yeah i'm his bracket demon but here he wins the role another opponent who has whirlwind shora so yeah really obnoxious my hand is good like i, I will not complain about this hand i like this hand a lot it could use a little defense but like you know, I'm not going to complain about it. Like if I went first, like this game would have been a little bit different, but I just burst out Akaius and get Treeborn set up because I have like all of these plays for next turn. And I'm just praying that I can somehow, cause this is so much damage. I'm just praying that somehow I can, I can steal this win. Cause I know it's going to be hard without a way to stop this. So like, it's going to be really difficult. You know, we're going to Econ, take the Gale, half the Bora, attack it, try to get the Kalut out of his hand. And then we're going to go Substitute. Unfortunately, he drew a, pre a Royal Oppression, so like, we get cooked. And he gets to resolve Whirlwind, Shura again. And it's just so oppressive if you can't stop it, and like my opening hand just couldn't deal with it, which is the reality a lot of the time, especially when they go first. Bottomless, I'm just, there's no way. Like, there's too many searches. And I stop this here. So I'm hoping that I draw, like... I was hoping I drew, like, brain control or something right there. I think I could have maybe done something. I don't know if I would have won, no. But, yeah. That was that was just a bad, just a bad whirlwind shore game. And you've seen a lot of those. You've seen, like, several rounds. My opponent... I think every Blackwing opponent I played against in this tournament had whirlwind 
plus Blackwing, usually Shura. Again, like the fact that I topped this tournament to me is wild. Like, I don't think any of the Blackwing people that I played against topped it either. Like all of them scrubbed out. Even drawing hands like this every game, like bro, multiple. I, I do think like Black Wings is definitely the easiest deck in the format by far. Like it is, it is the helmet deck of the format, and that's no shade to anybody. I top with it too, and the EWCQ, the last one that that just passed, I think it was EWCQ eight. You know, you just strap your helmet on, and you just draw whirlwinds, and you just beat people, even if you don't necessarily like deserve it or, or you're not better than them at all. Like you could just be awful. Not saying that Harrison is good because he's actually pretty good, like genuinely. But I mean, you see some of these rounds, you see you see other people. I'm sure if you played this format long enough, you've experienced it, but a lot of the Black Ring players are just mid and they get carried by Black Whirlwind. And that is kind of why I call it like the best deck because the ceiling of it is so high. Like, cause you just draw a Whirlwind and next thing you know, your deck is the best in the tournament. And also, a good player with the deck is really, really dangerous. The floor of it is also pretty ridiculous because your cards are just broken. Like, your cards are just, like, Kaluta's broken, Gale's broken, Blizzard's broken, uh, Soroko is broken, Bora's broken, Vayu's broken, Shore is broken. Like, all of their cards are just overtuned. So it's, it's just really obnoxious that, like, no matter who's piloting the deck, the deck is just really strong regardless. But then, obviously, people don't play as well so then you know the deck doesn't win as many tournaments as it probably should and it kind of gets a bad rap but i feel like if you're a beginner or just like in that intermediate level where you don't think that you're capable of playing something better in the format something more skillful then i think black wings is the perfect deck like i think this is the ideal deck for somebody who is like i don't really play that much edison i'm not going to play test a lot i'm just going to play this deck this is the perfect deck for you Okay, so this game, we got a press turn one, which is really unfortunate, but we did draw a swap frog to try to get back in there. So we now have Treeborn access and I'm feeling really good now. Like I'm feeling great. I have a ton of options going forward and he doesn't have a monster. So we're gonna to continue to beat down. Like this is fine and salvage is live now. I have the deep prison set just in case he has like Kaiku or, or the Fuss Diner randomly. Of course he has Whirlwind again. So that's the third game in a row. And yeah, so we do present this. We're going to rise in this whirlwind. I just wanted to target the card that I could guarantee get off the field. Oppression, I actually want him to have oppression face up because it doesn't do a goddamn thing to my hand. Like I'm so fine with you oppressing me or having it face up anyway. So yeah, we're not in a bad spot. Like it's it's not that bad. He has a black whirlwind, but I don't know if he has any monsters because he didn't have monsters for so long. So we draw heavy and I don't really think I need the heavy here because I'm reading that this is just like not that serious and he still has oppression up, which again, doesn't hurt me. So now all his back rows are gone. I'm going to thin my deck out a little bit more. Bounce and if he wants to play into my gores, by all means. So he goes whirlwind, same thing again. Attacks. I drop the Gores. Now Gores plus Heavy Storm is broken as fuck. And I draw Econ. So I get the standby phase and I bring back Treeborn and I'm thinking here because if this is not Icarus attack, if that back row that he just set right here is not Icarus attack, I just win. Like right here. Like I, Icar I, I, I Econ, Tribute, take this, bring back Treeborn, Tribute this and the Treeborn for Light and Darkness Dragon, everybody to attack mode attack game, right? And there's nothing to it. If it's Icarus attack, then he could do like I'll tribute Treeborn, try to target the Kalu, heal Icarus, and pop the other two cards on the field, my other two monsters. And I'm kind of in an awkward spot where I'm just bringing back Treeborn if I want to or not. So I decide that I'm just going to go to main phase. And we're going to go heavy. He Icaruses these two, but this is not good enough. Try to go special, tribute both, summon lad, 28 puts him at a really low up mount and I have Econ, which is basically saying I have brain control. He tries to drop Gores or like he at least activates it because why not? My lag goes down to 2300, but he still takes 28. So he's still really low. He goes Blizzard, negate it. 
And here, I'm going to activate Treeborn until my lad is all the way down. So now, lad can no longer negate anything. Standby phase, take the Blizzard, play Salvage, add back Swap Frog, Special Summon Swap Frog, bounce the lad, Tribute, Tribute, Summon Attack for game. And he said, damn, that was sick, GG's. And he said, demon for real. <laughs> so that was all of the Swiss rounds of the tournament. Uh, as you can see, this deck is good, but the opening hands are sus a lot of the time. Like it is it is very sus. I just feel more comfortable with Hero Frogs having more, just more well-rounded openings. Like I just feel like I have more starters or whatever you want to call it. Like Stratos is a ridiculous card. It has a better GB matchup. But yeah, I, I do like this deck because it's a frog deck and I pretty much like every frog deck, to be honest. Like I like, I don't think there's a frog deck that I really don't like, except maybe like the combo frog deck, you know, the one that doesn't, it's trying to literally solitaire. But all of the regular frog decks that aim to duel and require you to know a lot about frog combos and stuff like that, I like them. As you can see though, I never colossal armor armed anyone. I don't even know if I did anything cool with Fishburne Blaster, to be honest. Yeah, the, uh, I mean... <laughs> I was basically playing Frog Monarchs this whole tournament and opening up some sometimes just really, really, really bad, but still getting there. A lot of Black Whirlwinds for me, but we still managed to get there. Um, I, yeah, I think Black Wings is a ridiculous deck. And I don't think that I... I definitely should not have topped because uh, if my opponent just activated Values Effect, summon False Nine, I just lose. Like, he actually ripped the perfect card. The Faustina was insane to draw right there, and I should have lost. But uh, everyone makes mistakes, and we were able to get there anyway, so check off another top to my resume. And I think that that pretty much concludes this. Let me go back to the deck list, I guess. So yeah, this is this is the deck. Uh, but if you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that, please leave them in the description or leave them in the comment section below, not the description, but leave them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer any questions that I can. But yeah, this is my Dream Frog top at Deck Devastators and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.